Hi, I'm Tiffany. Today, I'm going to show you how to add and subtract with fractions and mixed numbers. Adding and subtracting mixed numbers. When adding mixed numbers, you want to add your whole numbers together, then add your fraction. After you're done, you're going to place both numbers together, meaning you're going to add your whole numbers back to your fraction. When subtracting mixed numbers, you want to make both numbers into improper fractions, then subtract like normal. Let's jump into example number one. Example number one, I have seven and three tenths plus one and three fourths. I'm going to add my whole numbers like I mentioned before. I have seven over here and a one over here. That's going to give me an eight. Now, I'm going to write my fractions directly below these fractions. So now, 3 tenths plus 3 fourths is really just what we're working with. We don't need to consider the whole number anymore until the very end when we add it to whatever we get right here. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of detail of how to add fractions because I have a whole video dedicated just to that. So I'm going to move a little quicker here, assuming that you already know how to do it. We need to find a common denominator to add. Right now we have a 10 and a 4. The least common denominator between these two fractions is going to be 20. So I'm going to rewrite both fractions with the denominator of 20. Now I have to ask myself, to go from 10 to 20, what did I multiply 10 by? I multiplied it by 2. Now the rule is whenever you multiply the denominator by a number, you have to multiply the numerator by that same number. So if I multiplied my 10 by 2 to get 20, I must also multiply my 3 by 2 to get my new numerator. So 3 times 2 is 6. I'm going to follow the same process over here. To go from 4 to 20, I multiplied by 5. So I have to multiply this 3 by 5. 3 times 5 is 15. Now I add, and if you remember, your denominator remains the same, and your numerator is the only part that gets added. becomes 21 here. This is an improper fraction, so I'm going to divide to figure out what this fraction should look like in a mixed form. It's going to be 1 and 1 20th. I did that division in my head. If you're not sure how I did that, I'll show you really quickly over here. I divided 20 into 21. Remember, you always divide the bottom number into the top number. Remember my example with Sunny and Wendy? The 21 always gets blown over. The Sunny and Wendy example comes from another video. 20 goes into 21 one time, and it is 20. So when I subtract, I get 1. So these are my numbers. Whenever we divide, we go pick up our numbers, and it sort of makes like a G shape. So this is the direction we go in when we write down our answer. The 1 up top, or whatever your answer is up top, becomes your whole number. So that's where this 1 came from. The subtraction, the answer down here, your remainder, becomes your numerator. And the original number that you divided with, is your denominator, which really just remains the same from the beginning anyway. So this was pretty easy. I could just do it in my head. I knew that 20 was going to go into 21 one time with one left over, and my denominator would remain the same. Now I have 1 and 1 20th, but I'm not done because remember, I have to add my whole number. We ended up with a whole number in just the fraction portion. That is OK. It happens sometimes. What I need to do now is take this whole number and add it here. If I add 8 plus 1, I get 9. So I'm going to write 9. And my fraction portion just comes with the rest of the number. So my answer for example number 1 is 9 and 1 20th. Let's move on to example number 2. Example number 2. We have one mixed number and one regular fraction. This time we're going to pull the 2, which is the whole number to the first fraction, out to the side. We don't have anything to add it to right now. 
So I'm just going to write equals 2 over here. So instead of rewriting my fractions this time, I'm just going to cross out the 2 and use the ones that were already here. So now we're only dealing with the fraction portions of the problem, just like we did in the last example. We moved the whole numbers to the side, and then we dealt with only the fraction portion. So I need to get a common denominator. The common denominator between 2 and 5 that's the easiest to work with is going to be 10. 5 times 2 gives me 10, so 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 5 gives me 10, so 1 times 5 is 5. Now I'm going to add these two, and I get 9 over 10. Now it's time for me to add my whole number back to my fraction. That would be 2 and 9 tenths. The answer to example number 2 is 2 and 9 tenths. Let's move on to example number 3. Example number 3. We have two whole numbers that we can pull out and add this time. We have 4 and 2, and that gives me 6. Now, I'm going to cross these out again, my whole numbers, so that I don't have to rewrite my fractions because we've already dealt with the whole numbers over here. A good common denominator to use here would be 14. And just a note, whenever your denominator that you choose to use to add or subtract is already the denominator of one of your original numbers, that entire fraction just remains the same. So I can just write a 3 here and not worry about trying to figure out 14 times what gave me this answer because really if I did do it that way it would be 14 times 1 gives me the 14 so that means I multiply my top number by 1 and remember anything times 1 is always itself so 3 times 1 is just going to be 3 anyway we're adding let's address this fraction 7 times what gives me the 14 7 times 2 that means I need to multiply times 2 up here 3 times 2 is 6 when I add these, I get 9 and 14. Now I need to add my whole number back to my fraction. And I get 6 and 9 fourteenths. The answer to example number 3 is 6 and 9 fourteenths. Let's move on to example number 4. Example number four. We have subtraction this time. Here's my personal tip for solving a subtraction problem with mixed numbers. I prefer to change my mixed number into an improper fraction from the beginning. There are going to be times where your numerator is smaller in your first number than it is in your second number. Just the same way as when you have to regroup and subtraction when you're doing regular subtraction. What you're supposed to do if you want to choose to keep your whole number separate is borrow from your whole number. In my opinion, that gets really complicated. I think it's easier to just make the mixed number into an improper fraction in the beginning and then subtract instead of trying to borrow. Let me show you what that looks like. To make a mixed number into an improper fraction, you are going to multiply your denominator and your whole number, and then you're going to add what you get to your numerator. That entire answer is going to become your new numerator. You always work in a clockwise direction. So let me show you what that looks like. 9 times 2 is 18. 18 plus 5 is 23. 23 is going to become my new numerator. My denominator remains the same. Now I'm going to subtract over here. Again, I need to make my mixed number into an improper fraction. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 plus 5 is 11. 11 is my new numerator. 
and 6 is my denominator. Now I can think of this as a regular subtraction problem. I need to get a common denominator. Between 9 and 6, the smallest denominator to work with is 18. So I'm going to write 18 here and 18 here. And again, I'm going to ask myself, what did I do to take this number to that number and then do the same thing to my numerator? What did I do to go from 9 to 18? I multiplied 9 times 2. So that means I need to take my 23 and multiply it by 2. If I multiply 23 by 2, you may not know what that is, so you can come to the side of your paper. So that's what I'm going to do. It's 46. To go from 6 to 18, what did you do? Multiplied by 3. 11 times 3 is 33. Now we can subtract. Remember, our denominator will remain the same. We have 18 right now. Now, 46 minus 33 is 13. 13 eighteenths cannot be simplified, so my answer to example number 4 is 13 eighteenths. Let's move on to example number 5. Again, we're subtracting and we have mixed numbers. I prefer to make my numbers into improper fractions. I think it's the easiest way. 10 times 7 is 70. 70 plus 7 is 77. So 77 becomes my new numerator and 10 is my denominator. We're going to subtract. I need to multiply down here, add up here. 4 times 6 is 24. 24 plus 3 is 27. That's my new numerator. My denominator remains 4. Now I need to get a common denominator between these two and that would be 20. To go from 10 to 20, I multiply by 2. So I need to take my 77 and multiply it by 2. 77 times 2 is 154. Now I'm going to subtract. To go from 4 to 20, I have to multiply 4 times 5. That means I need to multiply 27 times 5. 27 times 5 is 135. Now it's time for me to subtract. I have 154 minus 135 and that is 19. And my denominator remains the same, which is 20. So the answer to example number 5 is 19 over 20. Let's move on to our final example, example number 6. Example number 6. Again, I need to make my mixed number into an improper fraction. Multiply here, add here. 10 times 3 is 30. 30 plus 2 is 32. My denominator remains the same. I'm going to subtract. 10 times 1 is 10. 10 plus 9 is 19. 19 over 10 is my next fraction. 32 minus 19 is 13. My denominator remains the same. Now I need to divide here. And a quick reminder of how we divide that is 10 going into 13 goes in one time and it's 10. You subtract and you get 3. And remember this order tells you how to pick up your numbers, how to write them down. Your 1 becomes your whole number. Your 3, or your remainder, is your numerator. And your 10 is your denominator. 3 tenths cannot be simplified. So the answer to example number 6 is 1 and 3 tenths. That's my last example. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, 
don't forget to click like, then head over to supereasymath.com for more math tutorials, printable video notes, worksheets, and more.